would like to call order the meeting of the directors of the USA Niagara Development Corporation for Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. I'd like to note for the record that this meeting is now being webcast. Uh, the directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask questions at any time. We welcome public comment on the items on the following agenda. After each item is presented and any comments are received from the directors, we will allow members of the public to provide comments. Speakers representing themselves may speak for up to two minutes, and those representing groups may speak up to four minutes. Speakers' comments may only address items considered at today's meeting. Before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I'd like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on today's agenda. No, no. If so, I would like, uh, oh, no, excuse me, I'll pass on this. Hearing none, uh, the foregoing have been noted for the record. Our first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the director's meeting of March 21st, 19, or 2018. My God, I was going to say 2018. <laughs> may, I have a, may I have a motion to approve the meeting? Motion approved, Mr. Nanula and Mr. Williamson, any questions, comments? Uh, if not, may I have a motion for approval? Mr. Nanula and Mr. Williamson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Chris Shefflin will present the next item on today's agenda. A, requ a request for, among other things, authorization to acquire real property. Chris. Thank you, Francine. Ready. Good afternoon, everybody. In January of 2017, Governor Cuomo announced his proposal for the expansion of the Buffalo Billion Initiative, which included the establishment of a program for strategic land acquisition in Niagara Falls to acquire key downtown properties uh, to support tourism and community development growth. For this end, USA Niagara has identified a portfolio of multiple downtown Niagara Falls properties under primary ownership of local businessman Joseph Anderson. The seller owns 32 individual properties assembled in 12 related parcel groups totaling 11.02 acres which it comprises 480,077 square feet of land and containing 248,212 square feet of gross building area. Uh, the map of the properties are in figures one and two of the materials for the public and the media and the directors, of course. Uh, the properties consist of 18 vacant commercial and former residential lots, four parking lots, four properties containing commercial and mixed-use buildings, and two currently operating lodging properties, the, uh, both the Quality Inn and Suites at uh, Fall Street, uh, 241st Street, and the Roadway Inn at 492 uh, Main Street, and four parcels containing buildings or structures related to now-closed tourism attractions, including Smoke and Joe's Native Center and the Niagara Falls Adventure Park. USA Niagara proposes to acquire the properties from the sellers for $25,755,000, to be paid under the conditions as described in the materials. The fair market value of the properties was determined by two independent appraisals conducted by USA Niagara. USA Niagara and the sellers have executed a purchase and sale agreement for the acquisition of the properties and certain associated personal property. The agreement contains an express condition to sale the approval of the transaction by the USA Niagara Board of Directors. Prior to actually closing on the properties, USA Niagara has a 120-day due diligence period commencing upon its receipt of certain documents pertaining to the properties from the sellers, things like leases, contracts, warranties, permits, architectural and engineering drawings, etc., to conduct any investigative studies, including but not limited to undertaking hotel operations analyses and transition planning, phase one environmental site assessments, and other physical inspections and engineering evaluations of the properties, in order to determine in U.S. and Niagara's sole discretion whether the properties are suitable for their intended uses. It is anticipated that the cost of these studies and investigations will not exceed $350,000. And as the board will recall, we have a procurement uh, guideline uh, limit on contracts of $100,000. So anything over 100 will need board approval. One of the actions we're asking for is approval above 100,000 to that 350 number. So we're asking for a $250,000 approval for investigative studies as part of this today. Um, Assuming no significant issues are discovered and the properties are deemed suitable for U.S. and Niagara's intended purposes, U.S. and Niagara will acquire the properties within 60 days following the expiration of its due diligence period. After closing, U.S. and Niagara will hold, insure, and progressively dispose of the properties competitively or as otherwise permitted by law. Holding costs would mainly be limited to insurance, security, and property management and maintenance. 
the funding will be provided through the Buffalo Regional Innovation Cluster Fund, a.k.a. Uh, Buffalo Billion Phase Two, uh, for the contemplated transaction costs, including $25,755,000 in acquisition, and then $1.25 million in holding costs. And the, the Table 1 in the board materials um, will take you through a, an accounting of how we get the, a total of $27,005,000. Future development, uh, in conjunction with ESD, the City of Niagara Falls, and the University of Buffalo Regional Institute, um, USA Niagara will develop a strategic land disposition plan for the acquired properties, all to advance the USA Niagara's mission and the policies of the city's adopted comprehensive plan and zoning or ordinance, particularly as depicted in uh, our il illustrative master plan, which is in figure three of the materials. Uh, from a preliminary standpoint, it is anticipated that under this plan, smaller, more reuse ready properties, I, for example, uh, mixed use properties currently on 3rd Street, would likely be competitively solicited for reuse and sale in the near term, while vacant property and sites requiring uh, raising of structures would be disposed of over a longer uh, term period. In the immediate term, based upon the outcome of the hotel operations analyses, it is anticipated that the two operating lodging facilities would continue to be run through an interim operations contract pending any long-term decisions on the redevelopment or disposition of, of those properties. Before I get to the requested action, I would just conclude by saying um, the proposed transaction is about a year or so in the making. Uh, it undoubtedly represents an enormous opportunity to remake a significant portion of the downtown landscape and really take uh, the future of downtown Niagara Falls to its next major phase of redevelopment. Uh, this will not be easy work, uh, nor will it be fast work, uh, but I truly believe it uh, cumulatively represents the most worthwhile and impactful project and acquisition that the staff could bring to this board at this time. So I want to thank the board uh, for everything that you do, and including allowing me to bring this item forward. Uh, I want to recognize the governor and his team for the vision and investment in Western New York, especially uh, for the strategic acquisition concept for downtown Niagara Falls. Uh, I want to acknowledge our commissioner, Howard Zemsky, and thank him for his leadership and his wisdom and his guidance on this and all the things we do here in Western New York, uh, as well as the mayor and his team for their long-term partnership and shared philosophy. Uh, an incredible amount of diligence and effort has been put forth over the past year by, by staff both at the uh, ESD level and USA Niagara level here in, the, in Niagara. So I want to thank our team of internal folks and our team of consultants uh, for all their work. And any successful transaction uh, requires two parties, so I want to thank Mr. Anderson and his team for uh, being available and responsive and working with us uh, on, on getting to this point today, which is really the beginning of a transaction, not, not the end of it, which I think is important to point out. So uh, with, with that, uh, the directors are requested to first authorize a corporation to enter into the necessary agreements to effectuate the transfer of the properties as stated in these materials. Second, acquire the properties in accordance with these materials. Third, authorize a commitment and expenditure of $25,755,000 from the Buffalo Billion II Fund to purchase the properties, plus $1,250,000 for related due diligence, acquisition, and holding costs. Fourth, to authorize the payment of the balance of the deposit of $400,000. Fifth, to authorize the president to enter into the appropriate contracts for conducting due diligence studies as necessary without further board approval, provided such contracts do not exceed $250,000. Sixth, to make a determination of no significant effect on the environment. And seventh, to authorize the corporation to take all related actions. Uh, based on the foregoing, uh, I probably recommend uh, approval of the attached resolution. Well, now it's my role. Uh, you know, judging by the uh, media presence here and Mayor Deister's presence, uh, there's a lot that we're going to be considering, but I must start this off by asking if there's any questions or comments from the directors regarding this uh, significant proposal that's before us. Chris, you, you stated that the like the disposition of the property it's not going to be quick or easy. What's the anticipated annual cost to the state in the interim period of trying to dispose of these properties? I believe we're budgeting 
John, three hundred thousand a year with insurance all in. We have a three year carry of nine hundred. Is that right? Three year carry. Yeah. And and how much of that can come from uh, properties that are already housed, like you said, the roadway in and the uh, quality in? Yeah. What's the anticipated? I'm imagining that's where the, we're going to take revenues from there. Right. So we have we have we do have some additional money in the billion to help carry the properties and the quality in is yielding the most significant net operating income, which we would uh, envision using to carry the properties. The exact amount, I think it's significant, Mike. I think it's probably high six to low seven figures but we're just now beginning true diligence, and so we'll have a better sense when we go to close, but we would be dedicating that revenue stream to carrying the balance of the portfolio. And just secondly, um, how does the city feel about, about this acquisition? I think those who've been looking at the development, or in some cases lack of development, uh, you know, in past years in downtown Niagara Falls, recognize that the lack of available sites for redevelopment, especially in close proximity to the park, has been one of the factors that has held us back. That said, everyone associated with USA Niagara knows we've had tremendous success over the, over the last uh, five to ten years in redeveloping properties in downtown Niagara Falls. Everyone associated with USA Niagara and our economic development department knows that the list of properties that we have to show to prospective uh, developers and investors has gotten very short, right? And so moving forward with this action, it gives us a, uh, and our partners at USA Niagara much larger portfolio of properties to offer for redevelopment. And we do have, uh, precisely because we've had uh, uh, some very notable successes in recent years, uh, we have a lot of interest from developers and uh, a lot of interest from investors. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, if we move forward with this in the long term, it lays the foundation for the next generation of redevelopment in downtown Niagara Falls, building on some of the successes uh, that we've had uh, on the, uh, uh, you know, the city side of the line, but I think also leveraging the investments that have been made and that are in the process of being made to expand and improve the park at the falls as well. So we're very, very strongly in favor. Chris, talk a little bit about the process, how this, this came about, how, how uh, we got to this point today. Yeah, so uh, we went back and looked. I think we started discussions with the seller a little over a year ago. And, you know, that conversation evolved uh, to a point where we were interested in the entire portfolio, not certain pieces of it. Um, we agreed with the seller on process, which would be we would identify um, pre-approved uh, appraisers. We would, um, they would, we would share the names of those firms. Uh, they would have to be comfortable with who was going to appraise the property. We had two independent appraisers, as we said, um, and we basically, you know, our procurement guidelines are make it a little bit easy from a negotiation standpoint. You know, you get two numbers. And you have to be somewhere, and there, you know, the, there are other numbers that can be brought up, and that can be part of a seller's thinking or a buyer's thinking. And certainly, that a little bit of that happened. But you know, we, we um, ended up offering within the range of the appraised uh, value, and um, you know, it was from a straight negotiation standpoint easy. I think the the a lot of staff time, um, a lot of discussion, a lot of, you know, just actual um, struggle with, you know, what what does this look like and how do, how do you how do you dispose of these and how do we make this the most effective transaction and are there other options out there? Certainly that we looked at other properties. Um, we continue to look at properties. Uh, we may, you know, we're likely done for a while, right, assuming that if, if the board uh, views this transaction favorably. Uh, so I think we weighed this against other opportunities, and as I said in my remarks, that it was hard for us to imagine a more impactful transaction that we could bring to the board that would that would free up uh, this much real estate. I mean, real estate development is land and capital, and if you don't have land, you know you you can't you can't build what you, what you know, I think can be built here, and you. And you, we've showed examples of that, culinary and the Hyatt Place and 
all the properties along the river, the hotels, and on and on. So um, it was arduous from uh, just a kind of staffing perspective. The, the appraisals were intense. They went on for several weeks, months perhaps, and um, it led to a negotiation and a successful contract negotiation. Setting aside the, uh, <coughs> the two hotels, uh, are you going to start an RFP process, you know, perhaps with Third Street, or are, are you going to so I, I just where we're Yeah, go? so I want to start. We, we have a 120-day due diligence period, and we have to close 60 days after that. So I think just from an understanding perspective, um, we probably don't that, – that is six months, so it doesn't take you to close till. You know, very best case, very end of the calendar year 2018. On the outside, it's somewhere in the middle of the first half of the first quarter of 19. So I, I think every, just from a expectation standpoint, like timing perspective. That said, we're already working on what, if not only what we would do, but we're working on the documents that would go. So like I said in the remarks, um, the, I think there are five uh, mostly vacant buildings on 3rd Street largely in good condition from what we see before we go in with professional engineers and just check structure and stuff like that. We probably would issue, the first thing we would do is issue, that would probably be where we start, issue a single RFP for all five properties that okay. people could bid on one property or mm -hmm. three properties or five properties. And I think that that's probably the uh, lowest hanging fruit, if you will. Um, you know, the, you have a lot of vacant land. You have um, some parcels that require some partial or full demolition, likely, and then disposition. So I think what we want to do is stage this in a way that over, you know, just like the marketplace, right? Like cities don't get built, right? They evolve, and so every year they'll, you would see improvement, and you know, you, but you got it. You have to work on it every year, and every year more properties would come back online, and and none of these properties leave you as um, long-term holds for the state of New York. <clears throat> so demolition is going to is a part of the process. Um, you know, I, it's not out of the realm of what we would consider on some of this stuff. I think you know, again, we want to go through our diligence, Mike. Um, but you know, just as an example, I would imagine that the snow park, right. which is four acres in the center of downtown on the international border crossing, as you know, in Niagara right. Street, um, I think that probably is a candidate for something you would. Scrape and prepare. Well, I hope that would be number one on the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. On that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a unique opportunity to secure 32 properties for a small municipality like Niagara Falls. I mean, I, I, I almost, f I mean, being in Niagara Falls these 20 years or so, where when these Mr. Anderson was acquiring these properties and and what his proposals were and, and how they failed, I mean, it, it's, almost, it's almost as if we're rewarding him for not being a good landlord, but I, I think it's an opportunity that would be hard to pass up. And going on what Mr. Mayor said, uh, it it's could be good for the city. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. To your point, I mean, it, the map that's up, if you look, I mean, his holdings really run north to south, right in the center of the downtown yeah. development mm -hmm. district, the tourism district. So you can you can have a profound impact on that entire geography. You know, the Fall Street, the center of Fall Street is three acres alone, right on your on your main street outside the state park. Um, you know, the snow park is four more. You know, seven. I mean, so you know, it 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 can have a ma major impact. It's not scattered. It's he acquired in kind of a north to south rectangle from just north of Main Street to, you know, basically Fall Street. Mm -hmm. It appears they were strategically purchased, and <coughs> now the sale is on it, and it's the right thing for the, the city and the state. I mean, it's, it's a very strategic piece of a property that you need in order to make a difference. You know, I, 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 I do want to thank... Uh, the uh, sta Chris, the staff of USA Niagara, certainly Mayor Deister and the city, um, and the governor for you know creating this initiative that we can access these types of funds. This is a significant amount of money uh, that's coming our way to eventually and hopefully help the city prosper in its downtown core 
and bring new money and bring new interest and bring new people into the community. So uh, there are a lot of thanks to all of you, uh, from us and to my fellow board members uh, for being a part of this, what I consider somewhat of a historic moment uh, and, and change for the city of Niagara Falls. So my thanks to all of you and certainly the governor and his staff. Um, are there any comments from the public that we might want to entertain? If not, I'd like to entertain a motion for approval. Motion. Mr. Nanula. Second. By Mr. Williamson. Uh, may I have a motion for approval? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Uh, the motion does carry, and if there is no further business, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. So moved. By Mr. Williamson and seconded by Mr. Nanula. <laughs> the three of us. So, so moved. Uh, the motion carries, and I want to thank you all for being here today and certainly for all the assistance that has been provided us and that you're providing the city of Niagara Falls. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good job.